kind of strange to stand in front of you all because I'm actually only a 26-year-old artist and everybody else has proper things that they're doing. Um, but I'll tell you a little bit about what I do and, and the process I have in my sort of train of thought. And I spent a lot of my time recently reflecting on how I view the world and what influences my work because of this, which is not a bad thing. Um, and it might help you understand my current perspective. Right, me worrying. Um, and that's me looking at my current perspective. <laughs> some of you might relate to this, and some of you might not. Um, so, hello, my name is J.A. Kennedy. I am John Drippins. Um, John, Kenny, John Pins, and a few other names that have just as little significance. I'm a storyteller of sorts, but words are not my forte. Um, I'm an abstract painter and an assistant to my inner voice. And even though I usually, I'm usually a bit of a shadow, I still have the inner urge to be remembered for something. It seems my natural instinct to want to be heard and to feel relevant. Human culture from its conception has evolved around the constant evolution of ways people communi communicate their inner thoughts, and through this have gained a sense of relevance. History has quite a few examples of thoughts, feelings, and ideas that have communicated, been communicated through forms of visual expression. Um, pigment chewed and spat to create the negative of your handprint is simply an act to say that you exist and ensures that you exist long after your face has been forgotten. And all, the wor all around the world, um, evidence of petroglyphs are examples of that natural instinct to voice our ideas to a larger audience. And even if you don't realize your existence, your voice has been noted. Um, today we do realize our own existence. We're here talking about that existence. And we hold our uh, conscious in the highest regard and its existence. But it's rare that we actually like, make an effort to prove this. And sometimes we still need to uh, take an un unconventional approach to be heard and to be remembered. Yes. Um, from a young age, communicating my ideas visually has been a natural approach in explaining myself. I thought lucky for me, since imagery has the potential to have an unlimited voice, since it has the possibility to make words thoroughly infinite. Hence my imagery. Um, but surprisingly, because of my inability to describe my ideas with only words, my nervous shaking up here, um, on numerous occasions, my work has been dismissed. And as a result, I've had to develop ways to make my voice heard and to make my voice louder, just as the person with the chewed pigment did. My abstract ideas I've had trouble describing with words now turn into paintings, and in a studio or on walls of buildings. And for me, I find it a bit more productive to voice my abstract ideas through visual representations. But you might need a real introduction to my ideas, especially if you're not already familiar with my work. This particular one I would probably call to finish tomorrow. That's a lot of what I do. I have lots of things started but not finished. In brief, my ideas are derived from my surroundings, so it's my surroundings that influence my artworks. My abstract ideas are a product of my abstract way of viewing these surroundings. In this particular one in Christchurch, on the side of a building where um, the other building had been ripped down post-earthquake 2011, um, I would call microvillas. And if you know what microvillas are, then you might get it. If not, go look it up. Um, the, abstract, the, the ideas are abstract, so the visual works are abstract in a way just as a petroglyph or a handprint might describe their surroundings. To try and make myself understood, I've done strange things in the past, but this might be a little bit more of a palette for Ted. Um, I'm going on a, out on a limb, so you might need to use your imagination, or please use your imagination. And this ex example is um, based on how I develop my abstract ideas and from my observations of my own surroundings. And it will help if you close your eyes so you don't become embarrassed. Um, I would like... Well, so close your eyes, yes, even you. <laughs> and this is an example. I would like all of you to think about your kitchen. You're standing in your kitchen, just in the middle. Each of you, unless you live in the same place, will have a different image in your mind. Now think about moving around your kitchen. With your arms, start describing how you're moving around that space. None of you are moving your arms. Now choose an item from your kitchen, pick it up, and begin using it as it is intended. And think about what you could, cre what you could create with that object. Please relax. 
Each of, each of you have imagined a different kitchen. Most of you would have imagined a different object. And some of you who did think of the same object most likely would have used that same object in a different way to the person sitting next to you. Some of you would have imagined creating something for yourself or imagined sharing your creation. <coughs> this example describes an everyday activity, a routine we're all familiar with. It is an example of a series of actions that are universal. But even though I gave you all the same instructions, each of your imagined scenarios would be unique. This example shows us how each person may approach the same universal, same universal routine differently. With a few spoken words to instruct your thoughts, we have possibly produced an infinite amount of visual responses. And, each, and to each of those responses are further infinite descriptive responses, just as each of us have a hand, but we all have a different handprint. And there are responses to each, to each of those handprints. So we now have a choice to share our unique responses. You can talk to me afterwards if you want to share them. <laughs> um, whether or not you voiced your responses up to you, and have you left an impression? Um, a majority of my 2013 was spent traveling around Europe and Asia and painting a few walls. This particular one was in London, in an abandoned or somewhat abandoned um, state housing complex. This one is in Berlin, in a nice park with a bottle of wine. And this is an abandoned, what was it? Like a machining factory in Cambot, Cambodia, in the south. Um, I also took part in a few gallery obscurities. This was me taking part in the Stroke Art Fair in, in Munich, Germany. It's quite good fun. Um, and I did leave my handprint where I could. I found the experience to be disturbing on occasion. Small things. <laughs> um, and during this particular trip, we stopped in 52 different places over a six-month period. And over this time, I had begun to lose that everyday routine and that sense of home. But if I could draw and paint on a wall, I did feel at home, luckily. I've always traveled, but never really stopped to think about how I exist in a space. And I've always enjoyed the idea of a constant, repeated routine but there was no constant during this trip. My focus on how I viewed daily routine then changed. Yeah. In late 2013, we returned to New Zealand and I, learned a bit of I had learned a bit about myself, but more importantly, I had returned with the obvious realization that I was actually only a small dot. But even though I was a small dot, I was a small dot that could be tracked and mapped across the world <laughs> and within a space. Bless you. Another dot, it's okay. Um, and now the artworks I had been doing before that trip had begun to make more sense. In early 2012, I had some adhesive tape made. Some of you might be familiar with it, if you're Wellington locals. Some of you might not. Um, the Running Man had become an image that, for me, re represented the repetition of every everyday movements and routine. At first, it was just a new way of putting a self-promotional sticker in public space, and an easy way to carry a few hundred repeated images at one time but little thought had originally gone into the process. It was an enjoyable step away from the painting I would typically do. And it was probably the start of a, my un well, an unconventional approach. I had begun to use the tape to go between public objects and eventually graduating to wrapping entire spaces using multiple objects in close proximity to each other. I was creating new surfaces. With this tape, I wasn't only putting my imagery in the public space to be seen, but to also be interacted with. And as a small dot, I was mapping my movements around those objects <coughs> and sharing the residue of that map movement. This could have been you. <laughs> um, it's also not dissimilar to the idea of moving around your kitchen and having your arms describe what you're doing in that space, or again, the handprint on a cave wall. I'd recognize that the method of putting material around objects was actually very similar to how my wall painting technique had begun to develop at that time. And this, in turn, was influencing my studio practice. When painting, I'm essentially emphasizing sections on a surface that I find important. With the tape works, the sections I found important were the objects I was putting tape around. And in the end, the tape, in fact, was just another form of painting. I was mapping my movement and essentially using the material to describe the negative space between objects. This was an important revelation for me. At the time, I was having issues with relevance, especially in my work, <laughs> and I needed some sort of affirmation. My work wasn't just figures and shapes in an incoherent existence. I'd realized that the figures I was painting could be me. They could be my peers, friends, family, or strangers linked directly or indirectly within my surroundings. 
the shapes that have already been describing my paintings were the objects that exist around us and the objects that we interact with. I realized that the act of painting negative space representing the relationships of objects and their surroundings could influence my paintings and simply, by simply observing my everyday routine. It became an exercise to pay more attention to my immediate environment. And observing them became another act of mapping. My work had become the physical embodiment of a map movement within my own reality. In the example of the kitchen, it shows us that each of us have similar surroundings, but we all react to them in our own individual way. Each of us has an answer, no matter what your food preparation area is like. No answer is more important than another, and my imagery is only my answer. The difference in a small singular voice and a loud singular voice is whether or not you're willing to share. And this can be applied in all walks of life. Um, this, is, this is only a brief insight into my own answers and how I deal with my own existence. And at the moment, this is me. This is the 29th of March, 2014. Thank you. <laughs>